Hey everyone, welcome back. Okay. Great, so uh, we've uh, started today's uh, session with understanding the spiritual aspects uh, of a of leading a worship ministry in the local church. Um, so let's move on. Page number 58 in your notes, please. Um, we'll begin to uh, start learning about uh, it's a practical slash spiritual aspect, uh, if I may say that. Okay, um, so learning how to flow with this spirit, right? Um, this, we're going to get a little bit more technical and hands-on as well. So uh, we'll talk about song selection, putting together a set list, as what we would call it, right? So uh, before the worship time, this is about again learning to flow with the spirit, okay, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, you're talking about a Sunday, you're uh, you are the worship leader. Um, your worship leading uh, activity uh, doesn't start Sunday morning. It starts on a Monday itself. Like right? you start preparing for the Sunday. You start thinking about the songs uh, that you're leading, that you're putting together, right? So that's before the worship time on Sunday. So what are some of the things that you can look for is song selection, right? Song selection, um, as look at worship as leading people into an encounter with God um, and a time of preparation for what God wants to do in their lives through the word and the ministry of his spirit. Right, uh, a, a le as leading people in, uh, into an encounter with God and a time of preparation for what God wants to do in their lives. Right, um, have a theme for your worship time. Once again, I also, you know, I, as I keep saying that, I realize that not all of us are worship leaders, uh, leading worship ministry or whatnot. Uh, but then it's okay to know some of these aspects of worship leading. Right, so that you can lead the people uh, that God will entrust you. Okay, so have a theme for your worship time. And listen to the Holy Spirit beforehand as to what He intends doing that day. Okay, uh, don't just throw a random selection of songs uh, that does not take the congregation on a journey into God. Uh, each song should generally build on the previous song. Understand the different phases of praise and worship which is declaration, praise, worship, personal communion, sailor moments, repentance, etc. Okay, so song selection. Um, well, let's just uh, do a fun exercise. Okay, are you all uh, up for a fun exercise? <laughs> okay, um, cool. So I'll give you all, I'll give you all say, uh, five minutes, three minutes maybe. Uh, and so your topic, let's say, Pastor, uh, uh, okay, but say I'm your I'm your pastor now, and I'm going to, okay, and you are all my worship leaders, and uh, and saying okay, all right, guys, uh, I'm going to be preaching a sermon on the love of God this Sunday. Um, what is your so, and I want you to put together a song list, say of four, maybe five songs. Uh, what is your song list going to look like? <laughs> Sorry, okay. Pastor, did you say the love of God? Did you say love of God? Yes, love of God. Yeah, I've put it uh, in the chat section. So that's your topic to uh, build a set list. So what you're going to, uh, that's the sermon that the pastor will be preaching on. So uh, how are you going to build your set list? Um, take a minute. Uh, I'm... I'm there to help you put your song list together. This is just an exercise, guys. Okay, so uh, some of you who are not, uh, it's like pastor, I don't lead worship. You know, just you know, uh, this is not graded. <laughs> this is just a fun exercise. It'll be more fun in person, but yeah, go for it. And suddenly we realize putting together a set list is so challenging, isn't it, guys? <laughs> okay. 
I don't just share one song at a time. Okay, put together five songs and then share it at all. You know, share it together. You know, it's at once. This is your set list. Okay, say okay, Rupa, you're leading worship. Asha, you're leading worship. What's your what's that four songs, five songs going to look like? Oh, even three songs is fine. Maybe five songs is a bit too much. Three songs is good enough. How many of you are using Google? Using Google is good. Okay, all right. Love so great, amazing grace. How sweet the sound the saved a wretch like me. The cornerstone, the goodness of God. Awesome, a reckless love, how he loves. One thing remains, obsession. I see you heard that song. Come on. Okay, yes, step up. All right, what about the others, guys? Christopher, Sri Kumar, say, still working on it? Okay, one more minute, maybe? Okay. Uh, well, anyways, guys, I hope you have uh, been, you know, uh, trying it out. Uh, but this was just uh, wanted to do an exercise with you all. But uh, yeah, putting together a set list is uh, is, is absolutely beautiful. Okay, um, I'm trying to sh sh see if I can um, share. Um, with some of the set list that I put together. Okay. Right. I'll uh, I'll share that a little bit later. Um, so the way I would uh, approach of making a set list, right, um, is uh, let me share in the chat section. Uh, so this is the kind of process I I uh, tend to follow. Um, this is like a solid ninety percent of the time. Um, right, so uh, how I choose the set list is first thing is um, it, you have like a songs of invitation, right? There needs to be a song of invitation. For example, now you know we have to remember Sunday morning. Uh, you know, you see, uh, fifty people, hundred people, how many over thirty people, five hundred people coming to a church. They are all not going to be in the zone. And pumped up, you know, everybody would some would have had a challenging week, or uh, a horrible week, uh, a bad week, uh, whatnot. And you know, some of them would have just parked the car in the parking lot. And from the time that they've, <laughs> from the distance between the parking lot and the church, they would have had a fight between you know whoever, siblings or spouse, whatnot. A lot of things can happen, and uh, and. Uh, 
and the worship leader asking how many of you are happy um you know and you can some of them might just smile back but then they're not feeling it saying uh yeah no i'm not there yet <laughs> uh right so you kind of you have you kind of just hold their hands and you know and then ease them into uh this thing that we that you know that this time of worship that we will be getting into so songs of invitation is a classic uh classic song in the 90s and in the early 2000s uh which we i used to do it, uh i probably overdid it uh, songs like say come now is the time to worship uh, right uh how many of them know that song it's, it's there in almost every language now brian dirksen who wrote it come this is a song of invitation it's like saying hey come now is the time for worship let's you know it's about jesus let's fix our eyes on him uh, right? uh and then other some of the songs uh, like we are here for you by matt redmond uh, let our praise be your welcome to you our hearts are open nothing here is hidden they you know the song just are some of examples guys okay it's the songs of invitation holy spirit you are welcome here right come flood this place and fill this atmosphere right so there's a song of invitation i will look at okay what song can i choose uh you know just ease uh welcome the spirit of the living god into our midst and also usher our people into the into his presence and then straight away I, I go into songs that focuses on him and nothing about how i feel uh what you know how, how happy i am how sad i am is it's not about me immediately but lead, followed by the songs of invitation will be the songs focused on who god is something very declarative you know how great is our god is classic splendor of the king clothed in majesty you wrap yourself in light age to age he stands a right? time is in his hands beginning and the end the lion and the lamb is all about him isn't it um name above all names worthy of all praise my heart will sing how great how great is our god um and there are kind of a hybrid kind of a songs that you know say holy is the lord we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship you now. A great and awesome is he. Uh, holy is the Lord God Almighty. It's very declarative, right? It's saying who God is. So uh, followed by the songs of invitation is are the songs of declaration. I would look at my set list like that. Okay, so what, what other songs can I add there? And then now we go into the songs of response. Uh, now I respond. Okay, now I encounter, now I see who he is. Uh, you know, I've declared who he is, now I respond. You say, okay, I surrender all in the context of to this great king that I've uh, witnessed, that I've declared, that I've sung about. I, you know, I, this is my desire, Lord, I give you my heart. Um, you know, it's the songs of response. And, um, and that kind of leads to... Uh, um, songs of uh, this holy moment uh, you know it's again pondering up on who he is like you know going all the way to the holy of holies for example the songs like uh, enter the holy of holies i enter the holy of holies uh, lord i worship you paul wilbur's song um right so most of the time um my set list uh, i would build it from the last song to the first one it's like working backwards like uh i would look at the fourth song you know like the holy moment as okay i want to build the rest of my set list around this song and so this is where i want to take the congregation to the end it's like uh like a, the left hook you know uh, what do i say okay they ask me okay, so what's the hook in this thing you know what's uh like every great movie has an amazing climax kind of a thing isn't it so it's like okay how, how are we going to end it it has to make sense from song one to song four so um, the way i function is work backwards and saying okay um i want this is where you know i want to take the congregation to um and so then work backwards something like that so um this, i hope this kind of helps um that you know some of you worship leaders um 
but also in talking about in line with the notes, right? Now coming back to the notes on page 58 about the importance of a set list. It's very important that one song flows into another song. It's uh, not just a concoction of some random things put together. One song is talking about faith. Other song is talking about love. Other song is talking about hope, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, you guys with me? Uh, So that is uh, before the workshop time. Any questions? Sorry, I heard something. Yes, say. Okay. Yes, thank you, Pastor. Uh, I liked um, the example you gave, very enlightening. Well, what about a case whereby the pastor doesn't share with you um, the message, though he gives a theme for the month? Yeah but you don't know the focus of the message uh -huh. on that sunday how then do you encourage your worship team you know to right. to set their songs in such a way that one way or the other we can still align with the general theme for the month or even with the message right. or how do you again even in, <clears throat> encourage worship teams that don't even have an a clue of what the pastor is going to preach, you know, to yeah. kind of also ensure that um, the songs, you know, minister to the people and kind of sync in with the yes. message. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, you can ask him, uh, no, say, as in, I, I, before I was on staff with APC, when I was just a volunteer with the worship team as a worship leader. I would I would email Pastor Ashes directly and ask him, I was like, Pastor, what's this week's uh, sermon going to be about so I can prepare the song set list? And so he would respond by saying, and he would, I would also ask, do you have any song suggestions? And uh, he would have a couple of suggestions. Uh, you know, he would say, you can look at doing the song, but you don't have to. Uh, if you can do it, that's great. If you cannot, that's fine as well. Uh, but so having that communication, that, that freedom to ask my pastor about what's this Sunday sermon going to be like, be about. And uh, and then if pastor says, uh, I don't know, Roshan, I'm still waiting on what the God, what God has, uh, God wants me to share on, then you wait on it. <laughs> but you start, I mean, you kind of start working on uh, the set list on, based on the general thing that. So it can work two ways. A pastor, a person who already knows what he's preaching about, um, but a, and a, and a preacher who has no idea yet because he's still waiting on God, which is absolutely fine. Um, and so you can just put in a word saying, okay, if there's anything that, that you'd like the worship team to do or sing or focus on, please let me know uh, so we can communicate the same to the team. So uh, this communicate uh, should be fine to say, nothing complicated. Thank you. So maybe another one question. Um, can there be a substitute to song to invitation? For instance, uh, I like the idea of, you know, you're bringing everybody's minds to the point that we're here to worship God and yeah. seek his face. Yeah. Can, it, can, can the substitute be um, a prayer song, basically? You, you, we're just praying, but in a way, it's like a melody we're singing a prayer song basically kind of in a way in that in that sense can that be a substitute for song of invitation yeah absolutely uh so, yeah see this is uh, just a a guideline so to speak of what i've shared is uh it, it doesn't have to be followed like you know to the uh, i'm not even expecting you or asking or telling you to follow the same thing pattern uh, it's just uh, one of the ways that you can approach preparing a set list. Um, so you can approach preparing a set list um, depending on you know the culture of your church, your congregation. What are they used to it? Uh, you know your culture, your congregation might be used to starting off with a song, which is a prayer, which is absolutely fine. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, this is uh, preparing a set list is what we will look at before the worship time and uh, during the worship time itself. We're, remember, we are talking about flowing in the spirit. So you're leading worship. Uh, it's very important to you uh, to um, to not to interrupt the flow. That means uh, it could be about 
uh, talk or exhort only when absolutely necessary. This is one thing I will tell my younger self. Um, I started leading worship at the age of 17, and I always felt the need to speak or to constantly talk or to constantly exhort. If I had the opportunity to go back and tell my younger self, I would say, uh, and maybe not in a very nice way, <laughs> uh, say, Roshan, please don't talk so much. Um, so you'll make of it if you want to. Because uh, um, we need to remember that we are worship leaders, not preachers, uh, you know. And yes, there will be times that you will, uh, you know, uh, have to share what God puts in your heart that you know that's where you're gauging and uh, that's absolutely necessary and you know this is what God's strongly putting in your heart um, to share and so that's absolutely fine what I'm talking about is constantly consistently uh, feeling the need to uh, talk or exhort um, right so just just flow uh, don't don't interrupt the flow be open be sensitive to the prophetic uh, see what God is doing in the moment right um, this is something um, okay this word moment is uh, huge um, for me in in a time of worship right? it's all about moments uh, for example we use that word um, in a very and not 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 very often but we use it when it is very special for example uh, you use it to say hey i remember the moment i saw that person for the first time i remember the moment when i met this person i remember the moment uh, i read this or i heard it yeah you yeah, does anybody relate with that uh, you know i remember the moment yeah um so there's something special about the moment. So a worship, a time of worship is all about moments with you and God. So for example, uh, it's, it's, uh, let's, let's just imagine now. Okay. Uh, you know, you, you, there's a couple, uh, you know, you and your, you and your spouse or whoever, but there's a couple going out for a dinner. Uh, and there's this beautiful table, candlelight, candlelit dinner, candlelight dinner, whatever. Uh, and this is, a, a, you know, there's this a waiter or the server who's, you know, uh, bringing the food. Um, and it's a dinner in a fine dining restaurant, right? Uh, everything is fancy. The distance between each spoon is measured. The distance between the, the, the water glass and, uh, you know, everything is measured and whatnot. Right, so and you're having this moment with uh, your loved one, right? You're looking in deep into the, each other's eyes and you're discussing whatever, having this conversation, uh, and it's all so romantic and whatnot. <laughs> uh, and then suddenly you hear a drop of a plate or something crashing or falling. Uh, it's like you know, it's what's happened is there's been a distraction, right? There's been a disconnect uh, in that moment. Right, so how is it in line with worship, Roshan? Is uh, so. You know, someone in the congregation is having that intimate moment with God. You know, um, they are in in that worship moment. You know, they are they're meditating on what on what on the goodness of God on His faithfulness. They're having that moment, and then here I am as a worship leader who is not uh, sensitive. And then just feels the need to talk, uh, which is not in time, which is not in line with what spirit wants to do, or do something unnecessary, or uh, that's more of a distraction. And what has happened is I have kind of interrupted the moment that this individual is having, or the congregation is having with God, or what God is speaking to them. Are you with me? Are you, yeah, it's like see. And also, so there's two perspectives, right? I'm the worship leader, uh, say, who's insensitive, uh, you know, but this, uh, what I shared is from the perspective of the congregation is that they are having a moment with God. Uh, and it's so important to be sensitive, um, you know, um, to what's happening in the room. But also, it also goes to the my worship team members, right? I'm leading worship and... Uh, and you know the drummer, the guitarist, the keyboardist who's behind me. Uh, now let's say uh, that I'm a good worship leader. I'm I'm sensitive to what God is doing in the room and what He's speaking. And 
and you know i want to every time i want to stop a song i lift my guitar up and that's the cue for the team to stop and pull back on what we are doing right now i want to stop the song because i'm sensing okay there's a moment there that we can pull back and so everybody stop but the drummer is not stopping he's playing an extra measure and he stops at the wrong place uh, now what has happened there is um, we've lost that moment that precious moment but as a worship leader i know i want to stop there for a reason i'm not just stopping because i want to stop i feel like okay stopping there sing, singing that chorus uh, or not repeating that chorus after that one time is not necessary so i'm stopping everybody else in the band has followed except the drummer uh nothing it's not eternally significant guys it's not like the earth is going to split wide open and swallow me because we didn't stop the song <laughs> like we it's just that we've lost that moment right you guys with me and so and those moments are precious uh you know in in this time of worship and that's why it also kind of irritates uh, me when I see uh, people walking in late during the middle of the service or worship services. Uh, so you have an individual who's again engaged fully uh, in their time with God. You know, they're having this, and then there's this individual who comes because they came late and say, uh, "Excuse me, can you move? I need to go in there." Ah, <laughs> oh, it's the grace, more grace, Lord. So, uh, <laughs> you. But that's the beauty of uh, during the worship time is you are being sensitive uh, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And that's so crucial. And I can't stress enough about it. Recognize those moments, those Selah moments. Um, right? It's very crucial. Um, let me, um, right. And then moving into the, the ministry time is um, now... Again, pastor has come up on stage. We, we finished the worship time. Pastor has uh, preached the sermon, and he's calling the worship team up. This might not happen in every church uh, where the, after the sermon, pastor calls on a worship team again. But what most of the times what pastor does at APC, Pastor Ashish, is after his sermon, he calls the worship team up back on the stage uh, to a time of ministry. Uh, right. Once again, uh, us being sensitive doesn't stop after the worship set. You, you and you continue to be sensitive to what God is speaking through your senior pastor, and you're gauging. Okay, this is where it is. This is where it is. Right. And so during the ministry time, let's say for example, there's an example in your in your in 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 the notes, page fifty nine. Where the preacher states, uh, he requests, okay, let's sing the song "Light of the World." Maybe you all know the song. Um, a simple thing. Uh, these are all practical pointers to worship leaders. Okay, when the when pastor says, let's sing the song Light of the World, uh, don't start singing from the bridge of the song. What's the bridge of that song? I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon the cross. It's so minute. It's so small in detail. It's, uh, again, if you don't do that, it's not something eternally, in, you know, something's going to happen. Uh, but it's just, Again, moment you're honoring, uh, you know, also the preacher, and you know, it's, it's small things like that. And the preacher says, that, "Let's sing." Then sings my soul. Uh, it, it's better that you don't start singing the verse. Oh Lord, my God, um, start from then sings my soul. Go start with a bang. This is ministry time. Remember that, right? Um, and then, oh, if if the preacher doesn't say anything at all. Uh, for example, if a preacher has preached on healing and deliverance, he's just given a, a, some, a fiery sermon on God is our healer. He heals. Um, I'm not going to come on ministry time and start saying Father Abraham and many sons. <laughs> um, sorry, that was a... <laughs> you get what I'm saying, isn't it? Uh, you, know, you, you choose a song that is in line with healing, uh, you know, I believe you're my healer. Okay, uh, you are you are great. You do miracles, so great. So, so a song that is in line with healing and uh, deliverance, right? Uh, you guys uh, with me? All cool. Yes. Uh, so yeah, Christopher, is a question. Yes. 
Uh, yes, but I just want, uh, wanted to find out uh, uh, in that, uh, you mentioned about that uh, Sela moment, um, where um, is there is, is there times when, um, you know, you may want to extend the song yes. and also uh, perhaps uh, have, uh, you know, um, a kind of an instrumental, uh, you know, moment, you know, and um, uh, it will be maybe a, you know, either a guitar or a, a lead guitar or a, a flute or, you know, or some wind instrument, which brings a, you know, a, a great uh, sort of, you know, sense of, um, yeah. Worship also uh, uh, in the, in the church at that time, yes. um, and sometimes this could be um, you know in, impromptu, you know, in the sense uh, it's not it's not planned. Yeah. Uh, now I know that you know there is um, you know EPC does have a, a very time you know it's very 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 uh, you know they seek to a particular time and you know it has to you know worship has to get over a certain time. But I'm just saying that uh, you know. It, it may also, you know, in, uh, in, uh, include that you know that um, a particular song doesn't get 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 sung. So I'm just trying to you know, uh, you know, just try to. Um, I mean, has that has that, have you had that experience before? Uh, uh yes. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll probably play a video now uh, to just explain that Sela moment. There was a time in uh, I was leading worship. I've uh, felt like God wanted to. Uh, release something prophetically but uh oh with an instrument um so that's happened um so uh, let me just uh, play that video um for us so this is a moment in worship during the worship set of, like like i just mentioned that felt like god wanted to release something uh prophetically but uh but he wanted to he wanted a person in the team to play something so uh, let me just share that for us. We just want to dwell in this moment, this present right now, and I request once again not to look around because we're going to do something right now, and I feel led to do that. We're going to prophesy over you, but with an instrument. Um, Zilu, I want you to prophesy with your instrument. And just receive. Okay. Once again, I just request engage with God right now because He's here, and as we prophesy with an instrument, receive it all.
Yeah. Oh, I played that. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah. So that's. Uh, um, there are moments like that. Um, the Sela moments where. I think it's so important for us uh, again as worship leaders to know that it's not. It's like we can all it's ca just calm down a little bit and just not go through song after song, and just dwell uh, in in that moment. <laughs> Sorry, I'm using the word so much in the moment of what God is doing, what God is saying. Um, you know, and just meditate, uh, and. Uh, and just let God do what He does best. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that, that, that was a moment. So, and that kind of uh, leads into the next point, which is like the last thing of uh, flowing in, in the prophetic, uh, you know, training the team to flow in the prophetic uh, time of worship. Uh, right. If you look at in page 60, uh, the definition of prof uh, pr prophecy is uh, God communicating audibly to His people through a person to speak or sing by an inspiration of by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's the definition. And what a couple of things? What releases the prophetic? Uh, it's not the only thing. Remember, a couple of things is when you see in Acts chapter thirteen verse two, it says, "While they were worshiping the Lord, the Spirit of God came over them." Right? And and revealed the, what you know the plans what they have to do next. In Acts chapter thirteen verse two, and then uh, Hosea ten uh, verse eleven. It's very metaphorically speaking, Judah shall plow. That means praise makes way. It prepares the way to receive the word of God. And it just prepares our hearts to receive the word of God as we as we as we praise. Right? Uh, you know, we just talking about the origins of praise from first year. If you remember praise and worship, uh, you know, remember Leah. You know, she uh, she's trying to win the love of her husband, so she she's obsessed with that. She's just only mindful and only focused on how she can win Jacob's love for her. So she names her first three sons. Uh, you know, God has seen me, it's Reuben. Right? So will you not see me, Jacob, and love me? I have borne you a son, uh, and then second son. You know, I will you not hear? And then third, Levi. You know, now surely I've borne him three sons. My husband will get attached to me. So her focus was all about that. I mean, she realized that she couldn't do anything much. Verse four, uh, uh, the next step. Next son, she decides to name the fourth son Judah. Right? Okay, she's shifting the focus from herself to God, and and the things begin to change from there on. Right? And so Judah shall plow. So a praise uh, begins to prepare our hearts to receive a uh, uh, God's word. Right? Um, four dimensions of prophecy. <clears throat> is a prophecy of scripture prophecies that are compiled in the canon of the holy scripture that's right the prophecy of scripture uh the office of a prophet right um so who functions in the prophetic whose sole calling is to be a prophet uh, a voice right um <clears throat> god's voice to his people <clears throat> to the nation nations etc and this gift of prophecy uh, where this, this is the gift of the Holy Spirit, where every believer is uh, encouraged to pursue this gift as well. And this is to, uh, for edification, uh, exhortation, etc. And then the spirit of prophecy, the quickening or, or, or corporate anointing of the Holy Spirit in which all may prophesy. Okay, so these are just the four dimensions um, of the prophecy. I'm sure uh, you have learned a lot more in depth in the course, Understanding the Prophetic. Um, Right, but then some of the guidelines uh, in moving in the prophetic uh, is an intimate relationship with God. Once again, it all comes down to that basic thing. Uh, intimate relationship with Him, lifestyle of worship, lifestyle of fasting and praying, and intentional Bible study and meditation. Uh, these four basic, simple guidelines for us to, uh, you know, to equip ourselves to move in the prophetic, to flow in the prophetic, to incline, uh, you know, our ears to what God is doing and saying, right? Um, so encouraging our team to build that intimate relationship with God, like living a lifestyle of worship, uh, not living two different lifestyles on stage and off stage, 
a lifestyle of prayer and fasting and uh, intentional Bible study and meditation. Right. Um, so that's moving uh, in, the, in the prophetic as well. I wanted to play a very small clip once again, uh, a video um, of of the of the prophetic, and and I felt like this this person explains it so beautifully. Um, so here it is. Did y'all find some, Psalm 148? Go to Psalm 148. Now, now, uh, by by diving right in, uh, here is here's where here's where we're going to head. It's, there's an awesome sound in heaven right now that is invading the earth. And there are people that God has created to ha that will have an ear to hear the sound of the song of the Lord. You know, I have a book called The Sound of Heaven, Symphony of Earth. There's a sound that is so, that is so powerful in heaven that is leaking over into this realm. And those that have an ear to hear it are coming into agreement with the sound of heaven. And when we start coming into agreement with the sound of heaven, the word where two or more agree is actually the word symphonio, where two or more symphonio, it's a musical term. So when that sound of heaven invades earth, it's like also there's another side of it, the sound of heaven is invading your life. And when the sound comes from heaven, you have an opportunity to reject or, re, or to resist or react, or you have an opportunity to respond. And when you respond, you become an instrument in the earth to resonate or resound, resound his glorious song in the earth. Are you with me? Let me show you how this works. One of the ways, hey, hey James, back on the sound uh, board guy, um, is, is this guitar, is this guitar on? Turn this guitar. What I want to do, I want this guitar to be very loud in the house, and I want my voice, you don't want the guitar real loud in that monitor, of course, because you'll get some feedback, but I want my voice very loud in this monitor. Okay, guitar loud in the house, voice loud in the monitor. Hallelujah. Oh, sorry, move too close. Hallelujah. Holy Lord. Holy Lord. Ah. See, that guitar is responding to the sound of my voice. Holy. 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 Holy, holy. Holy. See what it's doing? It's hearing the sound of my voice and it's saying, I agree. And the Lord is speaking to a generation and He's waiting for us to hear this sound of His voice and become instruments of worship. Did you know what I was talking about last night or this morning? When I was talking about the enemy, Satan himself, he didn't have to leave worship with a guitar, he was a guitar. And then we got his place. And now we become instruments of worship unto a holy God. Because we hear the sound of his voice come into agreement with it. Holy, 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 worthy, worthy, worthy. Now, thanks, James. We may yeah, that was pretty awesome, isn't it? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that's moving in the prophetic. That's flowing in the prophetic, knowing and understanding that there is a sound in heaven that is so loud that that wants to invade the earth. It all comes down to how many of us are, you know, willing to hear that sound and come in line with that and say, "I agree," and say, "Amen." That is prophetic. That's uh, and it, and so to train the team to move in prophetic is not just to say that oh our team moves in the prophetic. It's not for that. It's it's to say that 
we want to hear the heart of God because he has to say something and we want to release that. We want to be that vessel that he will flow through. So that basically is prophetic uh, worship. Hey, um, so hope that video was helpful. Um, yeah, any, any, any questions, anything you want to ask or share? All right. Awesome. Uh, well, we'll conclude our session for today with that then. Uh, we conclude Chapter 6 as well, uh, Worship Ministry with the spiritual aspects of it. Right. So uh, thank you all for joining. Hope you had a good time. Uh, God bless you. I'll see you all again next week. Uh, watch out for the space because I'll be sharing your final assignment um, uh, today on the on the stream sections. All the instructions will be given, uh, you know, in the stream section. So don't worry. All right. Take care, everybody. God bless you. Have a lovely rest of the day. Bye. Thank you, Pastor.